Hi Maths General students, uh, this video is to take you through a bit of an ISMG criteria breakdown to help maximise your grades. I've seen some really wonderful videos from McClatchy Maths deconstructing these ISMG criteria. So if you'd like to subscribe to her channel, she does such a wonderful job of taking you through step by step these ISMG criteria. I wanted to add another resource that Maths General students can use to help understand um, the QCAA language that is used on your ISMG criteria sheets for maths assignments. I've created a document um, using the ISMG criteria to help teachers and students understand what the criteria um, are talking about and looking for within um, your assignment that you may have written in general maths. At the bottom of this video, I have included a link um, where you can download uh, the sheet that I've put together to help students and teachers uh, navigate their way through the criteria sheet. Now this is something that I've constructed uh, myself in line with the glossary QCAA have supplied is my understanding of the ISMG criteria. I've included a copy of the criteria sheet itself, which we're all very familiar with. And within the document, you'll find the four criteria broken down. So this is in a very rough format. Um, it's not 100% polished, um, so I've grabbed any of the key glossary terms that are associated with the criteria and put them to the side here. And for each of the top criteria in order to earn top marks, I've then gone down and broken them down into a little bit more simple language. Starting off with that first top criteria, documentation of appropriate assumptions. To address this criteria, you need to write assumptions that are conditions stated to be true, presented as a statement, claim or assertion, which is a statement of opinion, with evidence of a decisive relationship linked to or effects identified on the model. So example wording you could use, an assumption is that give your statement, claim or assertion, um, as this could cause or have an effect on and then talk about the relevant aspect of the task or model. Looking at the next criteria, accurate documentation of relevant observations. Observations, which is data or information, um, can be presented as an accurate statement, claim or assertion which then goes on to associate or link in why this is required to solve the task um, by developing your mathematical model. So for example, the wording you might use, an observation is insert your data or information as a statement, claim or assertion. You then need to go and document why this piece of data or information is important um, by associating or linking in an aspect of the task or model that um, this data or information contributes to. The last criteria is accurate translation of all aspects of the problem by identifying the mathematical concepts and techniques. So to do this, the plan of approach that you have within your report is thorough and methodical with all details specifying the mathematical concepts and techniques you're going to use when you're solving the problem or task, which may include basic formula if relevant, and or you're describing the mathematical processes or techniques you use. Moving on to the solve criteria, the top mark criteria here, the first one is accurate use of complex procedures to reach a valid solution. So what we wanna see here is a precise and exact solution to the problem or task achieved in the student response using a series of interconnected mathematical procedures. So if within your response you include a series of steps that 
are easily identified as being linked together that work towards a solution that is completely correct in every way, you've ticked this criteria. The second criteria is discerning application of mathematical concepts and techniques relevant to the task. What a fun word, discerning. Okay, let's have a look at what it means. So this means, are you making thoughtful and astute choices, so good judgment calls, when you're using your relevant mathematical concepts and techniques in order to form your solution? And it should be evident that everything you've done is relevant to the task itself. The last point is accurate and appropriate use of technology. So in this part of the criteria, we're checking whether your use of technology um, has clearly been identified, you've used it correctly, and its added value to the solution is clearly evident um, and documented. Third section on evaluate and verify. The first point says evaluation of the reasonableness of solutions by considering the results, assumptions, and observations. So what we're looking for here is a thorough appraisal process where you're making sound judgments showing the mathematical influence undertaken on firstly the result being the solution you've developed which should include some sort of verification process so redoing it using another method checking your solution with another credible source and giving valid reasoning to support why your solution is right and reasonable. On top of that, you need to address any assumptions that may be relevant. Given the assumption was refined, demonstrate the mathematical effect of this change of the assumption on the model and thus the effect on the solution itself. As well as that, pick an observation or two and talk about Given that that observation was refined, demonstrate the mathematical effect that this change of observation has on the model and thus the solution. Moving on to documentation of relevant strengths and limitations of the solution and or model. So when you're identifying strengths and limitations, you're looking at aspects, processes, data, information, etc. Um, that your solution and or model did or did not cater for. So in really simple terms, what was good or bad? Was the data used to construct the model or solution reliable and accurate? Was there enough data to analyze? How accurately does your model or solution aid in making predictions? How effective was your model or solution in painting a picture of the relationship between the variables you're looking at? So you present this as a statement with an explanation on why this had added value or was an opportunity for improvement if the task was done again. So example wording you could use, this aspect process information is a strength because, and then give your explanation of value added to the model or solution. A limitation is that all aspect process information because, and then go on to explain the opportunities for improvement in your model or solution. Lastly, the justification of decisions made using mathematical reasoning. Here we're looking for a clear justified mathematical reasoning where we're seeing stated values as evidence leading up to um, presenting or resolving a final solution to the task or problem which shows consideration of alternative conclusions, if applicable. Lastly, looking at the communicate section, um, looking at correct use of appropriate technical vocabulary, procedural vo vocabulary and conventions to develop the response. Here, I'm looking throughout the whole report response. Are there any terms that have a precise mathematical meaning? Uh, there's some examples there, and they must be used in the correct mathematical context, which means the circumstances around your setting or scenario. This also applies for instructional terms, so your cognitive verbs, for example, calculate, convert, sketch, and your mathematical conventions, so setting out, notation, etc., 
which must also be correctly used throughout the development of a response within the report. The last point is coherent and concise organisation of the response appropriate to the genre, including a suitable introduction, body and conclusion, which can be read independently of the task sheet. So this means, is your response easy to read and succinct? Does it get to the point without waffling or repetition? Does it flow on a logical progression? Is it well structured using the report guide format you've been given? The aim and purpose of the task or problem to solve is clearly identified when reading the student response as a whole. Feel free to use this document if you think it will help with your understanding of how to address the ISMG criteria. If you're a teacher, feel free to grab a copy of the document and use it, modify it however you would like. Um, but I hope this has helped some of you understand how to interpret the ISMG criteria sheet a little better. Thanks, maths general people out there.